Okay, thank you very much. Uh, in the next few minutes, I will share with you our experience in treating uh, horticultural structures with uh, uh, stents, uh, stressing the difference between bare metal stents and cover stents that we experience in the, uh, our institution in many years. Well, some years ago, we published this paper about the results and make long-term follow-up of stent implantation for aortic cancer structure, demonstrating good results, but not perfect results, as we will see in a minute. Our total experience up to April 2014 consists upon 180 patients uh, with a median age of 15 years with both native coartation, the majority, or recurrent coartation after surgery. We've been using bare metal stents and cover stents in, uh, in this experience, and uh, implantation of the stent was successful in both groups. The, there is no difference for age, weight, etc. cetera. Uh, however, the type of coartation was different because uh, uh, in uh, the group of uh, cover stand will be treated uh, much complex uh, cases. In both groups, with bare metal stand and cover stands, we achieve a good hemodynamic result in terms of reduction of peak to peak pressure gradient immediately in the cat lab and increasing vessel diameter. We've been using all these uh, bare metal stands as you see here, starting from the original Palma shots many years ago that has been abandoned since many years. That's an example of a moderate uh, coartation, native coartation, 45 millimeters mercury gradient, immediately after stent implantation, nice results, zero gradient, and persistence of good result during follow-up. We experience some complications uh, started with bare metal stents in three out of 97. We have two aortic rupture, both for recoartation, in one case using palma shots and in another using understand. And in one case uh, with native coartation with uh, almost closed uh, rupture or periaortic hematoma that I'd like to show you the picture. This is the angiogram of cohort with a rather severe cord with kinking. Immediate result, we see the nice uh, stent implantation, but you see at the CT there is a shadow, but both on fluoroscopy and on CT, a shadow around the aorta uh, represented by periortic hematoma. We be treated yeah, that's another picture of uh, this patient. We treated this patient conservatively, not doing anything, just weight and control the pressure. And uh, we had the spontaneous resolution of this hematoma that was actually a nearly rupture aorta, actually. So, certain stent implantation gains increased popularity for a treatment of obstruction, but some problems or complications cannot be avoided completely, like annulus formation, dissection, or wall rupture. The question is whether cover stents can improve the results and avoid complications. We've been using uh, these two uh, type of stents in most cases, we are uh, using CP cover stand. Well, the advantage stand, as you may know, may have uh, some problems or recoil. In some anecdotal cases, ending up with nearly complete obstruction. So this is not our favorite cover stand to treat cord. This is an example of a very severe cord with some kink. That's the immediate result as seen by angiography in the cath lab and in a subsequent CT scan. Another patient with more severe form, or, or if you say subatratic aortic isthmus atresia, just with a semi-selective injection, you can see a tiny passage across the cord that uh, could be passed with a coronary wire, then a coronary balloon was inflated just to get a bit more space to allow the passage of the wire and the catheter. 
allowing to establish a circuit between the femoral artery and the radial artery, then a slight balloon to get the possibility to advance a sheath and implant in a cover stand. That's the inflation of the balloon expanding the cover stand is a, in a nearly arthritic cord, as you, you saw a minute ago. That's the immediate angiogram with good result, no extravasation. So we can go ahead and uh, achieve further expansion of the stand with a larger balloon. You may guess whether we can stop here and do a redilation later on, but uh, we did it in the same session with very nice result, with no gradient subsequently. That's another example of an extreme coartation, or if you like, uh, complete interruption. Well, Tarek will cover this uh, topic later on extensively, so I, I go on very quickly. This is a, a blind ending uh, uh, site of core, no passage at all, so we uh, get, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, well, so, sorry. By doing a simultaneous injection, oh, sorry, what is it? Well, if you don't want to pass you have to have an, uh, an access for an above and to check whether there is a passage indeed or not. With simultaneous injection, we demonstrated a fibrous continuity in the interruption side. We perforated it with a radio frequency wire that was there from above establishing a circuit and allowing a catheter, a small catheter, passing through the cord so we uh, changed from a in complete interruption to a nearly interrupted, expanded with a small balloon to allow a passage of a marlin sheet across the cord and uh, eventually implanting a cover stent. As you see here, expansion of the balloon with cover stent and uh, the immediate result with uh, no gradient, no extravasation, so we can go ahead and further expand the stand to the nominal size, and that's the complete recanalization of the vessel with no gradient and no complication. So the cover stand can give some advantages, for example, treating patient with aneurysm. In this uh, particular patient, the cover stand got rid of the mild obstruction and the the aneurysm as well. Another complicated case with multiple aneurysm, a cover stand was implanted, again with the aim of uh, uh, avoiding uh, or relieving the obstruction and getting rid of the aneurysm as well, as you see in this angiogram performed immediately. We didn't experience any major complication with cover stands, so it's much better. During follow-up, we had some complication in the bare stance group. Aneurysm formation was observed in two patients, months after uh, stent implantation, 10 and 12 months. This is an example, a 17-year-old boy with a very severe cord, nearly atretic, but it's a tiny passage here. Well, at that time, there was no uh, cover stent available, we implanted a bare metal stent with uh, nice immediate hemodynamic results, just uh, a 20 millimeters mercury gradient with nice flow across it. As you see here, and no aneurysm formation, no nothing, so we've been very happy. However, during follow-up, there was evidence of aneurysm formation in the place, in the place of, of the stent, or the bare metal stent. So we, uh, we brought the patient to the cath lab again. You see by angiography the small aneurysm. We implanted a cover stent covering the site of uh, aneurysm formation. This is just uh, a, a cover stent four millimeters larger than the previous implanted stent. So the, the 20 millimeter residual gradient was completely abolished as it was the aneurysm. 
another patient where during follow-up we saw a small aneurysm and the top of the bare beta stent that was, was previously implanted. Again, we implanted a cover stent in the site of the origin of this uh, uh, small aneurysm and uh, uh, the solution, that, that was the solution of the problem, as you see by this angiogram, complete resolution of the small aneurysm, as you saw before. No complication or serious complication in the, during follow-up of, of uh, cover stents. So the major advantages of a cover stent versus bare metal stents, obviously, is a less risk of unwanted damage of the aortic wall, the strong indication for cover stents are subatratic or atratic native cord because of, we certainly have less risk of dissection or rupture, or native or recurrent coartation associated with aneurysm, aortic orientation and PDA that can be uh, occluded in the same time when implanting a cover stent. So what, what are the indications for bare metal stand nowadays? Obviously, the risk of side vessel occlusion, where you, do you don't want to occlude side vessels. Or particular anatomy like this, it's a very unusual and nasty uh, situation with uh, hypoplasia of the aorta and the uh, huge dilatation of the descending aorta. Well, the, the surgeon uh, had a lot of concern in treating this patient. So what uh, we attempted to do is to implant a bare metal stand to, to cover in the, uh, getting rid of the stenosis. But obviously, because of proximity of the subclavian artery, we couldn't use a cover stand. So in this particular occasion, uh, we like to uh, implant the stand with uh, rapid pacing to reduce the risk of uh, dislodging of the stand. This is the stand deployed with rapid pacing, as you see here. And that's the final angel, which is not aesthetically uh, nice, but very effective for dynamic, for hemodynamic point of view because the, the gradient was uh, completely abolished. That's another example of native coartation with hypoplastic transverse shards and uh, the origin of the subclavian, as you see here. There is no way to avoid the origin of the subclavian in this particular case. In all cases with hypoplastic transverse shards, we have to use non-cover stent. That's the understand implantation in this particular case, long enough to cover the entire length of the transverse shards it was uh, implanted uh, with uh, a bib balloon just to check the position of the stent and the balloon inflation of the outer balloon. And that's uh, just to finalize the results, I like to get a good position of the stand to the vessel wall. So I flare the distal portion of the stand with very nice result. Well, this is the immediate result and geographically and uh, the CT during follow-up, demonstrating the patency of the subclavian artery, which is jailed by the stand. Well, we may have debatable indications for uh, cover stands. For example, if you have a discrete stenosis without severe Ismus hypoplasia. Shall we go to do to implant a cover stent or just a bare metal stent? This is a 50 years old patient with mild recortation, as you see in this angiogram. We decided to use a bare metal stent and understand in this case. The implantation is uh, seen in this picture. The position of the stent is okay. Well, I would say a rather straightforward procedure. However, immediately afterwards, there is a pressure drop and there was evidence of aortic rupture. Well, in this particular occasion, I can tell you, uh, I've been very, very quick in putting a cover stent as a bailout that saved the patient's life. 
So nowadays, I think uh, you should not do any aortic heart obstruction by using uh, bare metal stand if you do not have on the shelf cover stand, at least for a bailout procedure. Well, this is a, a, an MRI or CT of a patient with a tight core, tortuous aorticismus, and uh, origin of the subclavian artery very, very close to the um, coartation site. So the issue is we are going to do a bare metastent implantation jailing the subclavian, but we are aware, uh, afraid of uh, complications. But if you implant the cover stand, you're going to cover the origin of the uh, left subclavian. So a possibility in this particular case is to use a dual wire technique to so, uh, put a wire in the ascending aorta and another one in the left subclavian and implant a single stent with two balloons, jailing or expanding the stent uh, uh, in, at the origin of the left subclavian, so avoiding the possibility of uh, obstructing the left subclavian artery. So that's the, a very useful technique that can be used. If you look at the uh, distribution of bare metal stents and cover stents during our uh, study, we, from 2000 to 2011, you see from 2000 to 2003, no cover stents were used because they were not available actually. Since then, uh, the use of cover stents definitely exceeded the use of uh, bare metal stents. Well, that's the uh, recent paper that is published by Michael Workers and Franco Butera of, in our experience uh, showing the experience of uh, treating the aortic arch for uh, bare metal stents or cover stents. So eventually our suggestion is to use cover stent as much as you can. Thank you very much. <laughs>